Hello class and welcome back to your official source of Kitchen Princess lore. I was completely floored and caught off guard by the amount of interest and love the first Kitchen Princess video got, and I'm sorry to keep you waiting this long, so let's get right into it. Where we last left off, Najika was about to give up on her dreams of finding the Flan Prince and run away from the academy because the bullies at school are worse than the fucking Heathers, but Sora and Daichi chase after her and manage to catch her and to try to convince her to stay. So they all go back to Sora's dad's house, which is fucking massive. <laughs> like, Asura's not gonna make it when the revolution happens. Sorry, guys. We also learned that the reason that Daichi lives in the dorms is because he hates his father and brother so much that he refuses to live in their McMansion. So Sora gives Najika three cups of tea, and she's immediately able to tell, like, what kind of tea they are, how long they've been steeping, what additional herbs and spices are in them, just by smelling them. And so Sora's like, I knew it, you have an absolute sense of taste. Turns out the reason Najika is able to cook so well is that she can literally smell and taste better than most people. She probably inherited this trait from her parents, who were also both professional chefs. Sora is obsessed with this fact, and he's like, I told you you're special, Najika. My dad was friends with your parents, and he told me they had a very special little girl. I've been waiting for you my whole life. And then Najika's like, Okay, I'll stay at the academy. So classes start up again and Akane is just shocked to see that Najika is still there. And her and her popular friends cause a huge scene and she tries to bitch slap Najika and Sora and Daichi get involved. It's a huge fucking mess. What else is new? The other popular girls are like, it's not fair. She's not even talented enough to be here. To which Sora replies, let's settle this with a baking competition. But of course, because it's Kitchen Princess, it can't just be a normal baking competition, so here are the fuck-ass rules. Akane gets to pick a professional chef to go up against Najika. Sora decides what they have to bake, and then they each have two hours to try to make it. Afterwards, the student body will kind of act as a jury and decide who made a better product. If Najika wins, she'll have proven that she's talented enough to be at the school. If she loses, she gets expelled. <laughs> Later, Daichi asks Sora, um, what the fuck was that? Why would you do that? She might be forced to leave the school of her dreams. She's like 14. There's no way she'll be able to beat a professional chef. Also, how do you have the power to expel people? To which Sora replies, I just want to confirm Najika's talent. He also takes this opportunity to be like, oh, you're worried about Najika? So you do care about her, huh? To which Daichi is like, <laughs> no, I don't care about her. I hate that fucking bitch. I hope she dies. It just, I, it seems a little unfair is all. At this point, let's pause to talk about Sora because it's not super obvious up until this point, but this whole time he's been kind of like scheming. It's just, he seems to know more than everyone else. He keeps saying shit like Najika's here for a special reason and like prompting her to prove her talent. He knew that she had an absolute sense of taste before even she did. And now he's setting her up with this pretty much impossible task just because he wants to see how talented she is. Remember, she's the one who's gonna be getting expelled if she loses. Also, Sora is not only student body president, but he's currently the substitute director of the entire school. He has this ridiculous amount of power and he's focusing it all on one girl. We learn more about this in the future. I just wanted to bring up that Sora is acting kind of sus. So the day of the contest arrives and Akane has chosen a professional chef from this fancy restaurant called Cantina. Side note, this guy basically becomes a recurring character because Akane drags him into so many things. Oh, and to add to the idea of Sora scheming and having too much power, he chose what they're baking and he provided the only ingredients they're allowed to use. He's fucking 14, he's already power tripping. Anyway, Sora reveals that the food they'll be baking is, get this, a signature strawberry shortcake from Cantina. So Najika's fucked, right? <laughs> She's competing against an adult who has made this exact cake countless times. There's no possible way she'll win. That is until they look at the ingredients that Sora provided. It's cheap shit. It's like dollar store flour and store brand butter, you know? Mr. Cantina's like, I can't work with this. I only use the highest quality ingredients. Meanwhile, Najika's already getting into it whisking eggs. Pollyanna's back, baby! But then, of course, halfway through the competition, Akane accidentally knocks Najika's bowl off the table, so she's gonna have to start all over. And Najika's like, oh, fuck! I don't have enough time to start over! I'm gonna get expelled by the court of public opinion! That is unless a certain brooding, dark-haired teenage boy jumps in to help her. That's right, our favorite Sundre Daichi jumps in and helps Najika finish, and surprise, surprise, she wins. All the students agree that Najika's cake was better. Even Mr. Cantina's like, 
I lost fair and square. She made the better cake. I can't work with these cheap ingredients. After this, business picks way up at the Fujita diner and most of the students stop bullying Najika. Wow, this is great. I sure hope this isn't followed by the worst plot arc in the whole series. Now we're at the part I didn't want to talk about. Basically, the rest of the plot of book two is about Akane struggling with an eating disorder. And it is the worst example of the writer's poor handling of serious topics. Basically, Akane is a model and so she has an eating disorder so she's able to stay skinny. Okay, I want to get this shit over with so I'm going to summarize the rest of book two right now. Najika notices that Akane has an eating disorder and so she cures it with the power of friendship by baking for her. And we're leaving it there. That's all I'm gonna say about it. On to book three. <laughs> book three starts with all the students walking to classes and as Akane passes Najika, she says, good morning under her breath. That's right, baby, we're sowing the seeds for an Akane redemption arc, which is really impressive when you think about how much of a psychopath she was in the first book. They're not like BFFs or anything, but she's being civil with Najika. We also see her telling her goon squad not to mess with Najika anymore. We still have a ways to go though. The new drama is that Akane starts to suspect that Daichi has feelings for Najika, and when she asks him about it, he vehemently refuses it, to which she's like, good, I don't want to see you hanging out with her so much. Like, okay, Calm down. Anyway, Najika brings Sora some pancakes while he's working and they have the most uncomfortable interaction I've ever seen. <coughs> she uses this as an opportunity to get more into his business and asks why he and Daichi hate each other so much. Sora opens up to her and reveals that after their mother died, their father remarried. Sora was okay with their stepmom, but Daichi was furious and saw this as a betrayal and never forgave his dad or his brother. At one point, Sora affectionately puts his head on Najika's shoulders, but this gets seen by one of the popular bozos who gets all in a huff about it because she has a crush on Sora. She's like, Akane, we need to kill her! And Akane's like, whoa, 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 I'm getting gradual character development, remember? I'm not fucking with Najika anymore. So then this kid whose name I don't even know is like, damn it, what am I gonna do? And I swear to God, she has this like eureka moment where she's like, Wait a second, my dad's a member of the school board. I'll use nepotism to hurt those less fortunate than me. So the next day when Najika goes to the Fujita diner, she sees that it's closed. Turns out it's on school grounds or something and the school board doesn't like that it's run by a degenerate bum and a teenage girl who's breaking child labor laws. You know, when you look at it like that, it actually makes sense why it should be shut down. <laughs> of course, Mr. Fujita doesn't care. He's like, what's the point of getting upset? It's hopeless. There is literally no possible way to save the diner, so give up. So Najika's devastated because she loves this job and Daichi's like, Sora, do something. You're the fucking director of the school. But it turns out it was a unanimous decision by the rest of the board, so there's nothing he can do. We might as well stop reading now because all hope is truly lost. Hey. Huh? Uh, Akane? They're having a PTA board meeting tomorrow and they're ordering catering from a nice restaurant. Why don't you make something too? Don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to help you or anything. What I'm saying is, it's too early to give up. <laughs> it's fucking on now. So cut to the board meeting, all the adults are talking and they're like, yeah, so we're all in agreement that we're going to close down the Fujita diner and replace it with an evil parking lot. Or so I don't remember what they were gonna do with it. <laughs> I don't care. And while they're talking, they're eating these treats that got catered to them. And they're like, oh, these are delicious, even better than their usual cooking. I'm sure there's no surprises in store for us. What? Boom, bitch comes in with the catering and she's like, here's the food you ordered. And they're like, but if that's the food we ordered, then who cooked the food we've been eating? And Sora's at the door like, hey guys, look outside. You might want to see this. All the students are having a massive picnic, enjoying the Fujita Diner's food. Najita greets the school board and reveals that in fact, twas she who made the catering. She expresses to the board how special the Fujita Diner is to her and begs them not to close it down. One of them is like, okay, you're a great cook and this food makes people very happy, but that doesn't erase the legal issue here. A child can't run a business by herself. There has to be a capable adult involved. Are you talking about me? Huh? Fujita showed up and he's pretending to be a functional adult to save the diner for Najika. He even flexes that before he lost all his motivation, he used to be a real professional chef working at a three-star restaurant in Paris. Bing, bang, boom, the diner stays open. <laughs> But alas, we barely get to celebrate this victory before Najika gets a phone call. It's her grandma back at the orphanage. She's sick. Oh yeah, heads up, 
uh, get ready for grandma to get sick and almost die a lot going forward. I know that sounds insensitive, but I'm just being real. Anytime that there's not enough drama, grandma just decides to die. So Najika, Sora, and Daichi all fly to Hokkaido together. This picture kills me. Why are they sitting like that? Ah, you better stop! Well, look who decided to join us, everyone. It's Matilda. Oh god. So they get to the orphanage, and grandma's in the bed, she's bedridden, there's a doctor there and everything, and Najika's like, oh my fucking god, my grandma's about to die. Guess what grandma's illness is? No, I'm serious, guess. Fatigue. The doctor's like, oh yeah, no, she'll be fine, she just needs to take a nap. What the fuck? But since they already made the trip, the three of them decide to stay at the orphanage for a few days, and what follows is one of my favorite story arcs in the entire series. There's a new kid at the orphanage, and he has a terrible attitude. He doesn't talk to anyone, he doesn't want to make friends. When Najika tries to get him involved in baking, he like lashes out and insults her. Finally, he breaks some eggs on the floor, which makes Najika lash out because you don't waste food. She chases him out of the house. It looks like she's about to beat his ass. But instead, they have a really sweet talk because this boy just lost both of his parents. Suddenly he doesn't have a family anymore and he's scared and he's lonely and he's sad, just like how Najika was when she first came to the orphanage. Najika tells him that he's in her family now and then she makes him cream puffs in the shape of his favorite fruit, which are bananas, and he smiles for the first time. Wait, why am I crying? <laughs> Actually, I'm like tearing up right now. But enough of an actually engaging story, we have a teenage love triangle to get back to. Najika and Daichi go out by the river to pick some flowers and she tells him about the Flan Prince, how a little boy saved her life all those years ago and gave her this special spoon. Seeing this spoon makes Daichi react as if he's remembering something. But then Najika drops the spoon in the river and she falls in and- Oh my god! So she outright asks him like, when you were little, did you ever come to Hokkaido and save a girl from drowning in a river? And Daichi's like, no, this is my first time in Hokkaido. I reacted to the spoon because that's the Academy's emblem. I, my dad had them all over his house growing up. Oh yeah, I guess that makes sense. So it's the night before the goon squad flies back to Tokyo and Najika's doing dishes with her fellow orphans. And one of them mentions how ever since Najika left, grandma's been really overworked. So Najika and grandma sit down to have like a serious talk where Najika's like, you've taken care of me my whole life. It's my turn to take care of you. I'm willing to drop out of school to help around here. To which grandma replies, Najika, we're gonna make a cake. Of course, it always has to involve cooking somehow. We can't just use our words. So grandma and all the other orphans bake a cake together for Najika to prove that they can take care of themselves. But I'm wondering, it's like, if grandma's working so hard, why can't the other orphans help? Like, what are their bum asses doing? Okay, so a little more happens after this point in book three, but I'm gonna stop here because what follows is confusing love triangle shit that ends in kind of a cliffhanger. I think it'll be less confusing if I cover that all at once in the next video rather than breaking it up, at least for me. I'm really thirsty, but I spilled my teacup, so let's see how this goes. It worked! I can do anything! So thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to listen to me talk about this. Um, it really makes me so happy that so many people got enjoyment out of a niche topic that I love so much. It means the world to me. So more stuff coming eventually. Subscribe if you want to, don't if you don't, and I'll see you next whenever I upload. Bye. I am so amazing. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,